Ellis Island lies in New York Harbor, a short ferry ride from Battery Park in Lower Manhattan and from nearby New Jersey. For over 12 million people, the largest tide of immigrants in human history, Ellis Island was a portal to America. And Lady Liberty was their symbol. And somebody yelled, the Statue of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, and we all ran to the railing to see the Statue of Liberty. And everybody was praying and kissing and happy that we were coming up to Hudson. Today's ferry ride recalls a far more grueling voyage made by our immigrant ancestors. Over 40% of all American citizens can trace their roots to someone who came through Ellis Island. Today, nearly two million visitors come to the Ellis Island National Monument each year. It is the third most visited national park in the country. Most enter the splendidly restored main building and museum, never knowing that half the island is near ruin. Across the ferry slip, is the forgotten side of Ellis Island. The south side houses a group of 29 hospital and administrative structures built between 1903 and 1937. They have stood vacant and neglected for half a century. In their prime, these buildings housed persons too sick to enter the country. America provided expert medical care free of charge. Uh, the doctor came to me. I I guess they have doctors are examining everybody, and put his arms around me and said, please, please, don't cry so hard. We're trying to help you. We only want to help you. For those confined to the South Side, it could be a sad and lonely place. But for the doctors and nurses, it was a challenging frontier. This huge autoclave was used to sterilize mattresses, a sign of growing skill in controlling contagious diseases. It's just one of the innovations by the Marine Hospital Service, which became the U.S. Public Health Service in 1912. The task was to inspect all immigrants, an average of 5,000 each day. To meet this challenge, they built one of the largest hospitals in the early 20th century. The staff at Ellis Island numbered over 700 people. Beneath new electric lights, doctors and nurses scrubbed up to treat old world diseases that were rare in America. They used new methods and equipment to succeed, curing pink eye, for example, which used to cause blindness, and bringing more than 350 babies into the new world. But for some, the Morgan autopsy room was the last stop. About 3,500 immigrants died on Ellis Island and were buried in potter's fields. A long corridor linked isolation wards where patients with contagious diseases were confined during treatment. Open doors and peeling paint are signs of the neglect that has let the elements take their toll on the hospital rooms. Simple maintenance would have prevented much of the deterioration that now threatens the south side. Over the decades, the buildings and connecting corridors have been overrun by vegetation growing out of control. Vines cover the buildings, digging their roots into the stucco walls and trapping moisture, keeping damp, which should breathe free. Scrub trees now tower overhead, their leaves fouling the gutters and their fallen limbs cracking the clay tile roofs. Water, the enemy of sound buildings, drips and seeps everywhere, causing rust and rot. These conditions cause both the World Monuments Fund and the National Trust for Historic Preservation to list the south side as endangered. But it is not too late to save these buildings. Last fall, the New York Landmarks Conservancy and the National Park Service selected this building for a demonstration project. When it was built in 1909, it housed medical offices and a laboratory. Inside, there are still intact original features, but one eve had failed and water was pouring in. The goal of the project was stabilization to halt deterioration, mostly by keeping the water outside where it belongs. Contractors working for the Conservancy made a series of simple repairs. The corridor windows had rusted away and were removed. Trees and vines were cleared away.
Using a hydraulic boom for access, contractors line the gutters with an experimental coating that spans the holes and cracks. Now the gutters will direct water away from the building as they were meant to do. The clay tile roofs were repaired. Spare tiles were salvaged and stacked in the attic. Where the tile roof had failed, a temporary asphalt shingle roof was installed instead. The roofs over the corridors were also repaired and their parapets coated, another way to ensure that water is kept out of the masonry. Wood windows and doors were covered with plywood boarding, fitted with vision panels and ventilation louvers so that air and light can get in. Most work was done from the outside to avoid the expense of interior cleanout and abatement. The long hallways are especially vulnerable because they are made of concrete and have flat roofs. The project demonstrated techniques for boarding these areas and keeping the water away from the building that are relatively easy and effective. One building and corridor segment are now protected from further decay for about 15 years, time enough to plan for their future and safe enough for visitors to walk nearby. The cost was modest. $39,000 in cash, plus pro bono services, donated materials, and volunteer labor. If additional funds are made available, the rest of the South Side can be stabilized as well. I was put into a little wagon, like a hand push cart, and pushed across a sort of bridge, a narrow bridge with windows on each side, and taken to uh, the hospital there plunked down <laughs> and <laughs> on a bed and a nurse and a doctor, which of course I realize now uh, started to take care of me. And uh, this is the memory that I have. The memory of the South Side deserves to be honored. The buildings deserve to be saved. If Congress acts swiftly to make a few million dollars available, they can be. All of Ellis Island and the entire story of what happened there should be preserved for future generations.